you're watching Roll for Crit here at PhD's Speed Gaming event in Dallas, Texas. We are joined right now by Justin from Fireside Games, uh, designer of Castle Panic, mm -hmm. and you have a brand new thing here to show us. Yes, which we do. fits well with your title. It your does, title. it does, <laughs> yes. We finally did a fire game, right, after all that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is Hot Shots. We are super excited about this. Uh, this is a cooperative press your luck uh, wildfire fighting game where um, the players are going to take on the role of actual Hot Shots, which is the name for the crews that are sent out into the woods to the really nastiest, hottest part of the fires, and they just go out there and fight it with their shovels and axes kind of thing. Um, there are four characters to pick as. Each one has their own ability, and the whole goal is to basically save the forest. You're going to win when you put out all the flame tokens, and you lose if either eight of these tiles get scorched, or you lose the fire camp. That is the one that will cost you the game right away. Um, it's really straightforward. Like most of our games, it's at least easy to get started in, then the complexity builds. Uh, on your turn, you're going to do a couple things. You're going to move to a new area. You're going to fight the fire on the area you move to, and then you're going to draw a fire card as the fire grows and spreads and stuff. Um, every tile has on it a couple of important bits of info. It's got this little number in the corner here we call the scorch limit. That's the number of flame tokens that will cause that to scorch. So if that ever gets three, it's done. You flip it over. They're all charcoal -y on the back. That's how you know you've lost. Okay. Um, but what you're really looking at is this recipe down here. Um, it's got a six different symbols which match our dice and you are going to try and roll to match as many symbols as you can and the way it works is you press your luck in that every time you roll as long as you can bank at least one symbol towards uh, what you have left, you can keep rolling. But if you ever roll and you only get symbols you already have, you don't have any new ones, you bust, fire gets worse, you make it go up by one. So mm. busting is bad. Um, <laughs> does not make you feel good. It does not make you feel good, no. <laughs> um, the good news is the more successes you get, the better you're going to do. Every card has a little breakdown on it, but essentially the more symbols you match, you're going to reduce the fire by more. You're going to get to get things like reward tokens, which can let you move around the board crazy. They can let you get uh, extra fires removed when you beat the game. You can save uh, dice that have been locked. You can also lay down fire breaks, which are really crucial to the game because they're going to block the fire from spreading certain uh, ways, which um, brings us to fire cards and wind. After you've done your movement, uh, you're going to draw wind. a fire card. And the wind is not your friend. So this little guy up here, this, this is our wind marker. It always starts blowing that way, but there are cards in the deck that will make it change so it blows each direction. And wind is very integral to the game, just like a real fire. If the wind blows, the fire is going to spread. So you flip over a fire card at the end of your turn and just do what it says. This one has a four, whoops, a four and a three on it. And what that means is currently burning tiles that have a four and a three scorch limit, you have to pick one four and one three and they each go up by one. So, so if there are two fours, we have to choose two tiles with exactly, fours on them. Exactly, yes. And if it was two fives, two five would go up. Now, if we got real lucky and all our threes were out, all we have to do is the four. You don't add an extra one or whatever. So, so if there was only one four tile that had fire on it. Mm -hmm. It would go up. Even by though there are two fours, it you'd only flip by one. one. Okay, yeah. so you don't I'm have to not that mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of nice, and as you beat the fire, your odds of having it spread go down that way. However, there's other fire cards that are going to come up. Embers have an actual picture of one of the tiles on it. You just have to add a fire to that tile. If it's already burning, it gets worse. Uh, the other thing you are going to see is the wind will blow. The wind blows in two different uh, ways. A light wind will always follow the direction of the, uh, the wind marker. So right now, if the wind blew, everything that has fire will blow to a new unburned space in that direction so only unburned though so that doesn't exactly if this was already like that that wouldn't spread there right it wouldn't go there and also the lake can never burn because it's a lake that's why it has okay. the no fire symbol Logical. however we, um, as fire spreads there are cards in here that will move fire extra hard it will jump fire breaks and there is one in here that does combine like you were thinking where it would feed this fire into this one if it was oh, already lovely. on fire yeah it's kind of nice that way <laughs> at the very least at least you're not nice they'll give us a polluted lake where it can't catch fire right <laughs> that is we have talked about <laughs> that an oil spill that makes the lake burnable yeah oh, um also, you, the wind will change direction, meaning you'll have to move this marker, so now it would all go different directions. That's a bad example because it's blowing north. But anyway, the point being, it also changes direction and blows. So yes, it is possible to put fire on every tile on the board. Then you get into the bad news, like right up here. Oh, we haven't hit the bad news Oh, no, yet. no, because now bad <laughs> stuff really happens. After the fire spreads, you got to check, because if it's hit its fire limit, it scorches. This is dry grass. It scorches on one. So fire's that out. makes sense. Tile scorches, and now the fire spreads. And the way it works is you're going to take one new fire and add it to an adjacent tile with the lowest scorch value. So looking real quick, we got a four, we got a four, we got a five, we got a two and a three, and you can't burn the lake. <laughs> two gets a fire. Two gets a second fire, it will scorch. So it is possible to have chain scorches where one fire starts another, starts another, starts another, and you all go down in a blaze of glory. Ha ha ha. Or at least a blaze. And um, yeah, eight tiles is how you lose. You win when you beat all the flames. You have to get everything out of the game. Along the way, you can do things like get somebody down to the uh, airbase where you can actually use things like the helicopter, which will take out one um, 
three tile, three flames from one tile. The uh, air tanker will take one flame off of three in a row, and it can be a curved row. And the uh, uh, brush rig will let you lay down a uh, line of three of these uh, fire breaks anywhere you want on the board. You also get bonuses we call support. Anytime you have someone with you, you get support, meaning in that horrible roll you made where you're like, I can't match anything, it forgives one of those. So you can try again, or you can stop and just take your lumps as it is, and hopefully you've rolled a bunch. Um, uh, also, the lake provides support to anything next to it kind of deal. So if you're fighting anything next to the lake, that helps. Almost every tile has some sort of special ability. Either it's really bad when it burns, like the propane tank, which these little oh, orange oh, flames oh, mean oh, everything. Explodes. That's just, great. Yeah. And so this one's hard to move through. It takes all your movement uh, action to enter or leave that spot. If you lose the fire cache, you have no more reward tokens, which are awesome. You're going to want those. Um, and then also, every character's ability is tied to a specific location. For example, the spotter, the one who looks out for the fire and their special ability is to draw two cards and choose which one comes out, they are Very tied important. to the lookout tower. If that ever scorches, you lose your special ability, flip your card over, you're just a regular firefighter Ooh. who rolls dice. So. Nice, thanks for helping the team. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all a pre random layout each time you play? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We actually have included in the rules a couple of options if you want to do, like, here's what Yellowstone is shaped like, and here's a couple uh, of no, no, parts. No, I mean, that's <laughs> definitely really cool, because, I mean, already when you're starting to explain that, I'm already thinking, because I was from California, and yeah. they have a lot of fires there, so I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Just I mean, day. well, because the first thing... Uh, I thought of when I thought, I'm like, oh, I hope I can get the planes, because that's the... Yes! Thing. And then when I saw that, yeah. I mentioned, like... It's, I love it. It's just a straight line. Yeah, see yeah. exactly how it they is work. It is one time only per game, though. So be careful when you use it. That's it. Right. It's done. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's it. Like I said, game game win, uh, wins if you take out all the fire. You lose if you lose eight or your fire camp scorches. Uh, well, one to four players. Um, it's like we're, we say an hour. It's actually a little less than that. But you haven't seen us play games. So. Oh, I see. I see. That's how it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, that could, that could be true. No, it sounds like a great uh, in the in the vein of something like Castle Panic. Yes. Lighter co-op. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I will say it's depth. deep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's deeper than Castle Panic for sure. But it's still that we're all gonna die together kind of thing. <laughs> no, and I and I really like it because also, I, like you said, you add the tiles that that really makes sense. So it's mm -hmm. not just a. Abstract, I mean, propane tank, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to explode. <laughs> Guess what? You're right. Yes, and exactly. these are magnificent. Yeah, yeah, those are 3D printed. Uh, the factory's going to have ones that are going to be a little more see-through kind of thing when they're done. So oh, okay, uh, cool. these are just standing in for now, but they're going to look very close to that. So. All right. Yeah, We're excited. Right. Yeah, as long as you don't show this to my brother, he'll bring a real match. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Dangerous. The game is flammable. <laughs> uh, anything else besides, or, or do you have a date for this, and is there anything else you want to play? Uh, we're looking May 31st for this one, and uh, we have other stuff coming after that, but I'm going to hold off and wait till we have more to of show. Course. This is That's the one fine. we're super excited about. Yeah. Hot shots. No, I mean, this already looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like another mm -hmm. great addition to the lineup. We are very excited. Uh, so check out, if you're interested in Hot Shots, we'll have links to Fireside Gaming through website and all yep. that stuff below. And thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, until then, this has been Roll for Crit at PhD Speed Gaming.